In this video, we're going to take a look at installing the Oracle WebLogic server. If you go to the Oracle Technology Network, you can download the software by going to the Downloads button. And let me scroll down here to the Fusion middleware, including WebLogic server. I'm doing this video in the beginning of April 2012. Right now, the latest and greatest version of the WebLogic server is 12C. I'm not going to use this version because if you look at the notes here, it says the Fusion middleware products are not supported on 12.1.1 yet. Uh, they will be shortly, but as of, like I said, April 2012, they're not available yet. So I'm actually going to go down, and if you look at these WebLogic server previous releases, and you go to see all downloads there, if you scroll down, you can see the different versions of the WebLogic server. It's a little confusing the way Oracle does their marketing materials. The actual version is 10.3.6, but Oracle refers to the WebLogic server as 11G. To make things even more confusing, the 10.3.6 version of the WebLogic server is actually patch set 5. So you'll see in Oracle's documentation or in their marketing materials, they'll refer to 11G patch set 5. What they're really talking about is the 10.3.6 version. Hopefully all the numbers will be synced up uh, in the 12.x uh, versions moving forward. But this is the one uh, that you actually want to grab for uh, doing stuff like the SOA install and some of the other managed servers that we're going to talk about. So I grabbed this file right here, this 1.5 gigabyte download file. This has uh, all of the additional pieces that go along with the WebLogic server. And you need some of these other pieces for things like the uh, SOA server, which I'm going to explain in other videos. So I grabbed this large file right here, this 1.5 gigabyte file, and I'm executing it on my Windows machine. The installs are pretty close. Uh, in terms of Windows and Linux. There's a couple of screens that are slightly different and when we get to those screens we'll take a look at those. So here we see the uh, pr uh, the uh, initial screen for installing the WebLogic server. So I'm going to click Next here. Uh, do I want to use an existing middleware home or do I want to create a new home? Because I have GDeveloper installed on my machine which has its own middleware piece to it, it recognizes that that's a legitimate middleware home. Uh, I don't want to install uh, the WebLogic server into JDeveloper, so I'm going to create a new middleware home and I'm going to call it, I'll give the, I can call it director anything I want, I'll call it WL server for WebLogic server. Do I want to get support notices from Oracle? I'll have to have my MetaLink or my Oracle support information. Since this is just a demonstration machine, I'm going to deselect that. Are you sure you want to bypass all the information? Yes. I can choose typical here. I'm purposely going to choose custom because there's a couple of things that I want to show as part of the installation. But you could choose typical here and uh, let the Oracle installer go ahead and install uh, the WebLogic server using custom, uh, using the typical settings. There's very few reasons to deselect any of the information here. Here's all the core components that go along with the WebLogic server. I'm going to select the server examples for both the WebLogic server and the coherent server. You certainly don't have to do that. It just adds uh, a little bit of installation space to your install. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, if you were setting up a cluster where you were going to join an existing installation, you may deselect a whole bunch of these things to make your installation uh, have a smaller footprint and go a little quicker. But for an initial install, there's really no reason to deselect any of these pieces. I can use the um, JDK that comes along with the software. If I have my own JDK that I want to use, I can select it here. I can change any of the directories around. Here's my middleware home directory that I uh, specified earlier. I can change these around if I want to. There's really no reason for me to do this on this test machine. Do I want to install something called a node manager is a window service. This is something you will not see if you're doing this on Unix or Linux. The node manager, we'll get into that in a couple of other videos, but the node manager, you can think of it as a program that makes your administration a heck of a lot easier, especially when you have a really complex environment where you have uh, different servers set up, uh, clusters that are maybe on different machines or span different machines. There's almost no reason not to 
have the node manager running and if you're installing on Windows you can actually install it as a Windows server so that it starts up automatically when your machine boots up. You will not have this option on Linux. You'll have to configure it on Linux manually but for Windows you can install it as a service. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This next screen is also unique to Windows. Do I want to have all my shortcuts in the Start Menu folder or just in the Local Users folder? You obviously won't see this on uh, Linux or Unix, but for Windows we have that option. Installation Summary. If everything looks good, click Next. I'm going to pause the video here as Oracle goes through its install. We'll come back when it's finished. Okay, the WebLogic server is finished installing. So what we're going to do now is run a program called Quick Start. Quick Start is a graphical program that allows me to configure the WebLogic software. So I'm going to leave Run Quick Start highlighted here. I'm going to click the Done button and it'll start running Quick Start for me. Let me get this in the middle of the screen here. It's hard to see all of the different options that are available to me. But I can see the documentation online. I can upgrade domains if this is an upgrade situation. I can start the samples domain or I can say getting started with WebLogic Server. So I'm going to select that guy and the configuration wizard is going to start automatically. The configuration wizard allows me to an extend an existing WebLogic domain or I can create a new one. Since this is a fresh install I'm obviously going to select create a new one. So I'm going to click on next here. What pieces do I want to have as part of this installation? I have things like the Web Services Manager, uh, Policy Manager, uh, different pieces for uh, JMS queues, um, JRF, uh, Basic Web Logic Server uh, domains, Advanced Web Services extensions for uh, JAX, uh, RPC, and WS. If you don't understand all of these terms, we're going to have other videos on things like Web Services and uh, Java message queues. So for this particular one I'm, I want to do web services so I'm going to select the two uh, that are associated with remote procedure calls and web services. I don't need anything else. I can always go back and change these if I want but for now I'm just going to select those guys. I'm click on next. What do I want as the domain uh, name for this particular domain? I'm going to call this my uh, WS domain for web services domain. Again, you can call it anything you want. You can change the location uh, if you want. I'm going to leave it in the standard location. For my administration server, configure administration username and password. Again, every domain has to have an administration server. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to create a password that goes along with this. And this is the username and password I'll use to log into the administration server. Again, every domain has to have at least one administration server. I could set it up so that that's the entire domain and I could deploy my applications to the administration server. In general, that's a bad thing to do. You don't want to do that. Maybe in a test or a dev environment, that's not a big deal. But in a production environment, you want to create another server that's part of your domain called a managed server. And the managed server is where you'll actually deploy your applications. So I set this information up. I click Next. Uh, what server start mode do I want? I can start it up in development mode, which means it'll start up a lot quicker for me. Or I can start it up in production mode production mode takes longer to start up but it can scale a heck of a lot better. I can also specify uh, different JDKs if I want. I can specify uh, another JDK location for this particular server. I'm going to leave it in development mode and the existing JDK. Optional configuration. I could skip over all of these pieces but for demonstration purposes I'm going to go through and I'm going to say I want to see the wizard that goes along with each one of these because I'm going to make a couple of changes to the standard installation. So my administration server, do I want to change its name? Do I want to change its port? Do I want to make it SSL enable? I'm going to leave it on 7001 for now and just call it the admin server. JMS distributed destination types. Again, once we start talking about JMS message queues, this will all make a lot, of, a lot more sense, but uh, I'm going to leave all of the standard things that go along with the uh, JMS distribution types. Manage servers. 
here's where we go through and we actually define a managed server. I don't have to do it in this step of the wizard. I can go back later on and create a new managed server, but I can do it as part of my configuration wizard also. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't have to s set up a managed server. I could just have my administration server, which is a full-blown G2EE web server. Uh, but the, it's a good practice to isolate the administration server. Just have it handle administration type duties, create a managed server that's going to handle the actual serving up of the applications. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to create a new managed server. I can call it anything I want. So I'll call this guy um, Web Services Manage Server 1. I can specify a listening port. Again, I can specify do I want to use SSL or not. No, I think that it looks good to me, so I'm going to keep it like that. And just remember that it's listening on port 7003. That's where I'll actually uh, deploy my applications. Here's where I can set up clusters. Clusters are just uh, WebLogic servers that are clustered together. So you can have high availability. You can have um, load balancing automatically. Because this is my first install, I'm not going to create any clusters now. I can go back and create clusters later on. But for now, I'm, I'm not going to create anything. Configure machines. This helps out the node manager when it's helping you out with administration things. Again, I don't have to add a machine here, but I'm going to go through and add one, and I'll just call this local machine. It's listening on localhost. There's my uh, node manager address 5556, which I set up as my Windows service uh, earlier on. Again, I don't have to do this, but it makes uh, administration of the uh, web server a heck of a lot easier. If this was on a Unix machine, I'd also have to go here and put in a whole bunch of information. But because this is a Windows machine, I don't have to change any of that stuff around. So I'll click on Next. Um, do I want to assign different servers to machines? And again, I want to take my web service managed server one, and I'm going to assign it to my local machine there. Again, this is, uh, will help me out when I'm running the node manager to do my administration things. Click on Next. Target servers or clusters. Again, you shouldn't have to change anything here, but this is just going to give you an indication of what's going to be installed on uh, the different servers. So I have my admin server. I have my managed server. It'll show me all the different pieces that are going to be installed there. Click on Next. JMS file stores. Again, I'm going to stay with the, uh, the standard information here. I can change any of this stuff around later on. And when we go through um, message queues, we'll take a look at what all of these different things mean. But for now, I'm just going to accept the defaults. I can use an RDBMS security store for additional security information. And if I click on database type here, you can see that WebLogic supports just about any kind of database for um, having a database store. I'm not going to configure that part of my security. There's other security methods that I want to use for my applications. But just know that this is an additional way of uh, associating um, a security model with your applications. So I click on Next there. I get a configuration summary. If everything looks good, if I made any mistakes, I can click Previous. But if everything looks good, I can click on Create. The Fusion Middleware Wizard will go there now and start up all my information, create all the different directories that are out there. You see, I also have this option here to start the admin server as part of my configuration wizard. I'm not going to select that right now because I'm going to have another video that shows you how to start up domains and take a look at some of the administration tools. So I'm not going to do that right now. But as soon as I click Done, I will have a, a brand new domain, my WS domain for web services domain, with two servers built into it, my administration server and the uh, managed server that I created. And then we'll look at starting both of those guys up in, in the next couple of videos, and then we'll start to applying applications to them.